back in the D-Link router, we're going to click on the advanced link, and you're going to see a lot of options here. The one we want is the first one that comes up, which is virtual server. I'll click the checkbox, and we'll name each service that we want to redirect to one at a time. So the first one is FTP. Then I need to type in the IP address of the server, which is 172.29.250.200. I'll select the application name. It is FTP, File Transfer Protocol. And then we have to put in the ports. Well, we've got the public port and the private port. The public port is the WAN side port of the router that people on the internet will connect to. The private port is the internal port number used by the server on the LAN side. They can't see that. The people on the internet have no idea what that is. So that's why we need this port redirection uh, to be involved here. Normally, that port number would be 21 for each of these. That's the default. However, your ISP may not allow access to port 21. They may block that port internally so that they uh, can save on bandwidth, basically. Or you may want to have a secure connection that not just anybody knows of, because everybody knows that FTP is port 21. So you may have to modify what that port is. And you can select something else, for example, 5711. Just make sure that the port you're using isn't utilized uh, by a common application. Now, the only problem with this is you'd have to tell every user on the internet what that port number is. And of course, you'd have to tell them what the IP address is on the WAN side of your router as well. I'm just going to leave it as the default as 21 for now. Now, I also want to set up a web server. So we'll call that www. And again, we'll put in the IP address 172.29.250.200. Application name is HTTP, and by default, the port would be 80 on both ends. So you might also see 8080 or some other port numbers. Once again, you could use whatever public port number you want. Just remember, you'd have to inform the users on the internet what that is. And finally, I also want a secure service. So that's going to be HTTPS. And uh, again, same IP address for the server. We'll type in the, uh, we'll click in the application name, HTTPS, and by default, as you remember, that's going to be 443. There we go. We've got three virtual servers. In reality, it's all leading to the same computer. We could have different services running on different computers on the LAN and make these different port redirections if we want. And what we're going to do is we're going to save those settings. No reboot is necessary and that information will become permanent. Now, if you wanted to turn off that redirection temporarily, you could just deselect the check marks and save those settings. Now, we also have the option for port forwarding. Now, what we just showed is a simple version of port forwarding, but this configuration gives you the option to have multiple ports open or a range of ports to a particular IP address. Now, you may want to use this uh, if you're using uh, some type of internet relay chat or P2P networks or bit net, uh, bit excuse me, bit torrents, <laughs> bit torrents like uh, uTorrent, something like that, where you have to use a range of ports or multiple individual ports. So that's where you would do that. But we're going to leave the virtual server as is. And now what I want to make sure is that my services are indeed running on the server. I installed the services, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're running. Who knows? Maybe I turned them off at some point. So I'm going to make a remote desktop connection to uh, the server. Can't use the 10 IP address anymore because we're not using that network. Now it's 172.29.250.200. And we'll connect. Log in. And I'm going to go to my MMC. And we're going to take a look at the list of services that we have running. Okay, here's the list. Here is FTP. And as you can see, it's not started right now. So I'm going to double click that guy. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the service. And then I'm going to set it to automatic so that every time I restart the server, the service restarts as well. Click OK. Now we see it's set to automatic, 
and it's started. Same thing for HTTP SSL. And the same thing for HTTP, which is known as the World Wide Web Publishing Service. Faster, faster. OK, so all three of those are started. And if we want to further prove that, we could go to the command line and run a netstat an. And of course, we're going to get a boatload of information here. But uh, if we scroll back to the top, we'll see, OK, 21 is open and 80 is open. Good stuff. FTP and HTTP are running. I'm at the virtual server page right now, and you can see I have two of them running, an FTP and an HTTP server. The problem with this is when I do this, it opens up public ports, ports on the WAN side or the outbound interface. So with ports 21 and 80 open, that is a security concern. Now, I'm not really doing anything with the server. I'm not really running an FTP or an HTTP that anybody on the internet needs to see right now. So I'm going to deselect those. And when I do so and save the settings, that will effectively close these ports on the outbound side of the device, making it more secure. And we want to do this for port forwarding as well. You'll notice in port forwarding, I have a rule set up for games. And it's checkmarked to the same address on my server. It's using port 27965. And it's basically a uh, Quake port for running Quake games. Well, that would allow people on the internet to connect to this server to connect to the games. So I don't really want that anymore for now. I'm going to deselect it and save those settings. So we've removed port forwarding and virtual server information. And it says, OK, we have to reboot once we've done that. I'll reboot later.